He's our friend from the NFL Network, noted Philadelphia Flyers fanatic. He believes it's Mike Garofolo. We're going to talk to him about hockey in a second, but first we got to talk about football because that's what we're paying him to do. Mike, play doctor for us if you can. Minnesota and Miami without Justin Jefferson and Devon A. Chan for extended time, but Casey hopeful, hopeful that perhaps Taylor Swift's rumored boyfriend might play this Thursday? <laughs> Let's start from the top. It's Justin Jefferson with that hamstring injury. Not surprising that he's missing time. You get a speed guy, a receiver guy like uh, Jefferson suffering a hamstring injury. Uh, you take him off the field while that heals. Now, four weeks uh, to go on injury reserve. It was not official on Tuesday. It's, it, it is expected to be made official in the near future. And that opens up a whole lot of questions. Number one. When does he come back? Because remember, the sides were unable to work out an extension right before the season, even though the team was willing to make him the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. He still wanted a better deal. Uh, so when does he come back? That's number one. Number two, what happens to the Vikings without him if they continue to lose games and they get closer to the trade deadline in a couple of weeks? Do they say, hey, we might as well be sellers here and maybe move some parts and get something in return? Uh, C, Kirk Cousins, what happens to him in the future if this team continues to spiral downward. Remember, he's in the last year of his deal. So uh, this is a significant blow, not just for the next couple of weeks for the Vikings, uh, but certainly in their future. Devon A. Chan, you mentioned him, the, uh, the running back, excuse me, for the Miami Dolphins. He's expected to miss a couple of weeks with a knee injury, could potentially land on injured reserve by the end of the week as well. Now, the good news is they're getting Jeff Wilson back to go alongside Raheem Mostert. Uh, Mike McDaniel does love to have a number of running backs back there, which is why the, Devin, uh, the Dalvin Cook chase never seemed to make any sense for them uh, because they like to have multiple options back there uh, and basically not spend all on one uh, running back. So, yeah, they've got options with A-Chan out, but A-Chan's speed was undeniable. Matter of fact, my buddy Will Blackman, who used to play in the NFL, now in the media, uh, tweeted out a video where he set the A-Chan run against the Giants to Tecmo Bowl music. It's fantastic. Go check out <laughs> Will's account if you haven't seen that yet. Uh, and as for Travis Kelsey, a game that I will be covering for NFL Network, uh, yeah, it, it's starting to look like he's got a real shot here. Uh, he was listed as limited uh, in the practice on Tuesday. Remember, these are all projections because teams don't go through full practices, but that certainly is a great uh, sign for Travis Kelsey as he tries to come back from that foot issue suffered the other day. Mike, the Packers lose the Sunday nighter, and it seems like they may have lost team harmony as well. Uh, Jair Alexander, interesting comments after that loss on Sunday. He said, and I quote, it's pretty obvious that the defense can't give up any touchdowns. So safe to say things are not going according to plan for Matt LaFleur and Green Bay. Yeah, I don't know the full uh, context of how Jair Alexander was kind of saying that. You, I know what you're saying. I know how it comes across. But I, I would say this. On the offensive side of the ball, if that's a reference in any way to Jordan Love, that's a mistake. Because Jordan Love has not had the full complement of weapons and protection around him. David Bakhtiari, his left tackle, is going to be done for the season. Aaron Jones has been in and out of the lineup. And when he was in against the Lions, he was limited. Uh, their wide receivers have been banged up. And I will say this about Jordan Love. It was not perfect, certainly the other night, with multiple mistakes, including that interception to end the game. Uh, he certainly made some mistakes against the Lions the week before that. But this is a guy that is still fighting. That game against the Saints, they had a second-half comeback to win it. Uh, the game against the Lions, even though they were had their doors blown off to start, there actually was a point where they were back in the game against Detroit. And even against the Raiders, they didn't play well in the first half, so he played well. Uh, him playing well in the second half was a great sign. So in Green Bay, they're taking solace in the fact that as bad as things have been and as limited as his options have been around him on offense because of all the injuries, this is a guy that's still battling in games and showing us he can rebound from things. It's not breaking him. He's uh, able to handle that adversity. So that's the good sign for the Packers that they're taking away from the early part of the season. Obviously, they'd love to get healthy, get everybody around him, start playing better earlier in games. But for now, that's the solace they're taking in Jordan Love. Speaking of quarterbacks, Mike, uh, Mac Jones has had a, a rough couple of weeks. And, and this was what was interesting to me, Mike. After last weekend's loss, Bill Belichick seemed, you know, he said to the media after it, no, this guy's still my starting quarterback. He was very much in his quarter publicly. Uh, after this past weekend's loss, a little more vague. Bill was so angry, he was very yeah. short with the media. 
A little more vague about whether Mac Jones is truly his number one going forward. So could we see, Mike, a permanent change at quarterback in New England? Yeah, this is close. There's no doubt about that from the conversations I've had with folks in New England. As a matter of fact, when Bill O'Brien, the offensive coordinator, stepped to the podium on Tuesday and said, yeah, I expect Mac Jones to be the starting quarterback. Frankly, it's not his final decision. And other coaches and executives in the building were waiting to hear from Bill Belichick on what the final decision was. So O'Brien may have spoken prematurely. This is definitely something that is a conversation inside that building in Foxborough, whether to stick with Mac Jones or go with Bailey Zappi. Now, Zappi is limited in a lot of ways. He doesn't have the uh, prototypical stature you want to see from a quarterback in the NFL. And even when you get some shorter guys like Kyler Murray or Russell Wilson, they're so quick that they can kind of create space to make their throws zappy. Not that same kind of guy. When he came in the game last year, a lot of batted passes because, again, he's uh, that shorter stature and can't throw over the line like a lot of other guys. Uh, but, frankly, when he comes in, sometimes he provides a jolt, a zap if you will, uh, Jay, to make a pun on his last name. So this is a team right now that has seemed pretty lifeless after that pick six by Mac Jones the other day that Tyron Matthew took in. I was told that the entire team was deflated, and that was still early in the game. Yeah. The game wasn't over by any stretch. So yep. this is a team in need of a lift right now. If Zappi doesn't start on Sunday, uh, that uh, leeway for Mac Jones is going to be very, very short. And then even perhaps moving forward when it comes to the side, the starter for their following game. Keep an eye on it. Uh, leeway so short, it's as if he's a Philadelphia Flyer goaltender. Mike Garofolo, I'll give you the floor briefly. How excited are you about your Flyers this year? How are you feeling about your Flyers this year? I, I guess I'm feeling better than every prognosticator that I've uh, looked at out. I was looking for one person to say, hey, watch out for these guys. They could jump up. And, and every single NHL preview, including the previews, from the locals as well was like, yeah, settle in. It's going to be a long season. Yes. It is what it is. Make it a full rebuild. Do it the right way. We'll see you in 2024. That's it. I mean, to borrow a phrase from a former uh, Philadelphia sports GM, uh, let's just trust the process from Danny Briere yeah. and Keith Jones. Uh, Mike, always great to chat with you, buddy. We'll talk to you next week. You got it, Jay. Hey, if you pay me for the football, do I have to pay you to talk hockey? Is that how it works? Maybe. I, I do that for free because I, I'm just that kind of guy.